ODSP, Benefits, Eligibility and Application Process. In this post, we will focus on ODSP Benefits, Eligibility and Application Process. What is the ODSP, Ontario Disability Support Program? The Ontario Disability Support Program, ODSP, is a financial assistance program in Ontario, Canada, set up to financially assist individuals who are eligible to receive it. Individuals with Disabilities The program is intended to help individuals and families who are unable to work, pay for their health services, go to school or pay for the cost of living because of disability. However, ODSP does not directly cover the cost of drugs or dental care, or vision care. In order to receive drug coverage through AHIP, you must apply separately through their Trillium drug program. Now, how do I apply for ODSP? ODSP application process is categorized under two headings. They are, determination of financial need, which may also include you must be an individual with assets that is not greater than the limits set in the ODSP regulations. Determination of disability or verification of belonging to a prescribed class. Once you commence your application, it will be given to a caseworker to handle. The caseworker will send you a letter detailing all that you're required to submit for your application to be processed. You might ask, what other important documents should I have with me? When you apply for ODSP, you need to bring a number of documents with you, including your birth certificate or immigration papers, social insurance number, SIN, card, proof of Canadian citizenship or residency, current health cards for yourself and any dependents on the application. If you don't have all of these documents right away, don't worry, you can still complete the application. If you need help getting any of these documents or other important identification numbers, like your SIN, contact a legal clinic in your area. The best criminal lawyer in Ontario can also help walk you through the process if you are having trouble getting your paperwork together. Let's talk about diagnosis and medical report. The first step to applying for ODSP is getting your diagnosis and a medical report. These can be done by a doctor or nurse practitioner. The medical report must be signed by a doctor or nurse practitioner. It must also be done on the official ODSP form for this purpose, which includes three sections. Now, a look at diagnosis and limitations. In this section, the prescriber of the medical report will list all of your health conditions that qualify you for ODSP as well as their limitations on your daily activities in general terms. The prescribers will also include how long they expect these limitations to last, that is permanently. If you have more than one condition that qualifies you for ODSP, make sure the prescriber lists them all here. Let's look at medications and treatments. This section is pretty self-explanatory. It's where any medications or treatments are listed that are supposed to help with your conditions. Make sure they're all there. This is how they know what medications and treatments have been prescribed and if any new ones come up after acceptance into the program. You can ask your pharmacists to add any new medications or treatments directly onto this form. Now, on prescriber's signature and date. The prescriber of your medical report must sign and date their signature before sending it away for processing. A look at legal blindness assessment. ODSP does not have a definition for partial blindness. The definition of legal blindness is 20 200 or less with the best possible correction for the better eye, or a field of vision measurement, 20 degrees or less. ODSP does not have a definition for low vision. Let's talk about the Disability Determination Package. The Disability Determination Package is a collection of documents that the ODSP uses to determine whether you are eligible for ODSP income support. It includes your application, any supporting documents that you submitted with your application and a report from one of the doctors or psychologists that you have already seen. The report should include information about your health condition, such as a diagnosis, how long it has lasted or how long it will last what effect it has on your daily life, and information about any treatment or medication you take because of this condition. When your doctor or psychologist completes the disability determination package, 
they should send it to the ODSP office closest to where you live. The ODSP office will then use this package to decide whether you are eligible for income support under the program. Now, determination of financial need. This will include any income that you receive. Therefore, the following may be part of what you are required to submit. Your income. Assets. Statement of bank account. How much you're paying for rent. Daily and monthly expenses, an idea. Dependent in your care. Spouse or partner you're living with. Life insurance if you have one. Social security number. Documentation of your immigration status, if you came in as an immigrant. Birth certificates of your dependents. Your birth certificate. Cards provided by the Ontario Health Insurance Plan, AHIP. Now, determination of disability or verification of prescribed class. You may choose to go through the typical process route of having a medical package sent out by ODSP. Know that the medical package is sent to be filled by a medical practitioner. Once filled, it is sent to the adjudication unit, which is usually one for each province, so the process may take six to nine months wait time due to the volume of submissions that need to be dealt with. A look at application for ODSP income support. To get the application, call your nearest ODSP office or go to http colon slash slash www.mcss.gov onca and mcss program social ODSP slash. Asking for help filling out the application is perfectly fine, so if you need assistance, don't hesitate to request it. It's important to complete the application and provide all of the necessary information required by the Ministry of Community and Social Services, MCSS. If you miss some important details or make a mistake in your application, there may be delays in getting your benefits approved. To help prevent mistakes from occurring, you should go over your application before submitting it to ensure that everything is accurate and complete. Now it's time to look at ODSP Benefits and Payments, effective January 1, 2022. If you are on ODSP, the amount of income support that you receive will depend on your individual financial situation. The most common types of benefits you may be eligible to receive are Disability Benefits this is the basic monthly allowance for living expenses. The maximum amount is $1,151 per month for a single person and $1,508 for a couple. Special Diet Allowances You may be able to claim up to $250 per month if you require a special diet due to your medical condition. You can also claim an additional $50 per month if the disability that led to your need for the special diet began before you turned 18 years old. Employment-related benefit. If you have worked or been self-employed in any given month, there is no limit on how much earned income or employment startup benefit, if applicable, that can be deducted from your regular ODSP payment. Special care allowance. A monthly allowance of up to $500 might be available if you have someone looking after your personal needs and care for example, a child with severe autism. Now, Employment Supports To receive ODSP employment supports, you must Be an Ontario resident Be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident of Canada Have a financial need for the support Be 18 to 64 years of age have a disability that is expected to last one year or more and limits your ability to work. Your spouse, common law partner and or dependents may also be eligible. If you're approved for benefits, they will be reviewed every 12 months. You can apply online or call the toll-free phone number to get more information. If you're looking for support because of an illness or disability in Ontario, the Ontario Disability Support Program can be a good place to start. If you're looking for support because of an illness or disability in Ontario, the Ontario Disability Support Program can be a good place to start. ODSP provides financial and employment support to individuals with disabilities in Ontario. The program is administered by the Ontario Ministry of Community and Social Services and is funded by the Government of Ontario. Did you know that ODSP is changing in 2022? The Ontario Disability Support Program, ODSP, 
will undergo some modifications in 2022, according to the government. The following are some of the suggested changes. Adding a work requirement to the mix. In order to continue receiving benefits, recipients would be forced to work, volunteer, or engage in an education or training program for at least 20 hours each week. A decrease in the amount of money recipients can earn before their benefits are lowered or cancelled. The quantity of assets that recipients can have before their payments are lowered or cancelled is reduced. The removal of a particular allowance for people who live in rural areas. According to the government, these reforms are required to ensure that ODSP is giving appropriate assistance to individuals who require it. Many individuals, however, are afraid that the reforms will leave many people without the necessary support. The most significant adjustment is an increase in the monthly basic allowance for single persons from $733 to $1,125. The purpose of this allowance is to cover the costs of basic necessities including food, shelter, and clothing. Other improvements include raising the amount that can be earned before benefits are lowered, from $200 to $300 per month, and raising the amount that can be saved without affecting benefits from $5,000 to $10,000. These modifications are meant to help ODSP recipients minimize poverty and improve their quality of life. My conclusion. We've tried as much as possible to explain all you need to know about ODSP eligibility and application process.